Hello, and welcome to the Spread.net 14 New Features webinar. Thank you all for attending. We will get started shortly. Okay, I think we can get started now. Hello and welcome to the Spread.net 14 New Features webinar. Hi, Sean, if I may want to interrupt, I think you're having audio problems. Sorry, I left my mute on. <laughs> now I, now you can hear me, I hope, I hope. Yes. Here we go. Okay, let's get started. Hello and welcome to the Spread.net 14 New Features webinar. My name is Sean Lawyer. And I've been managing the spread.com and, and uh, spread.net products for many years now, since before Grape City acquired Farpoint Technologies back in October of 2009. I would like to introduce our spread team members, Mackenzie and Tyler, who are technical engagement engineers handling spread support issues. They will be helping to answer questions submitted in the chat and help you with any spread issues you may have when you contact customer engagement for spread support. To submit questions during the webinar, please use the chat window and we will gather those questions for reply during the Q&A at the end of the presentation. Today, I will present the feature enhancements that we have implemented in version 14 of spread.net Windows Forms. These include the new NuGet package for .NET 5 and .NET Core 3.1, data types for custom .NET objects, cell types in, uh, I'm sorry, hyperlinks in cells and shapes, the new let function and how it can optimize formula calculations, the show formulas command, the new edit points feature for creating custom shapes, new enhanced keyboard shortcuts, multiple worksheet selection, picture zoom effect, in the checkbox cell type, and finally, enhancements to the advanced print preview that allow the user to easily print the whole workbook with one print job. We are very happy to announce the, re the release of the new grapecity.spread.winforms NuGet package on NuGet.org. This package supports .NET 5, .NET Core 3.1, and .NET 4.52 targets so you can reference this package to upgrade old projects to the new .NET 4.52 full framework build and to create projects targeting .NET 5 and .NET Core 3.1 using the same source. 
Please note that the new platform controls have limited design time support. So we recommend continuing to use the full framework controls for projects in design time changes, such as using the spread designer or other design time editors. Please also note that the new platform controls are not able to load any design time changes which were applied using earlier versions of spread.net WinForms or, or load XML files which were saved using those earlier releases as those files and resources contain some .NET framework types which are no longer serializable in the new platforms. The full framework build of spread.NET WinForms v14 is not affected by this issue, and when you upgrade your projects using v13 or earlier to v14, your design time changes and saved spread XML files will load correctly. However, before creating new parallel projects targeting .NET 5 and or .NET Core 3.1, you must save all design time changes for each form using v14 so that those types which cannot be serialized anymore are removed from the resource streams. This is only required if you want to create new projects targeting the new platforms. And if you are continuing to target .NET 452 or one of the older frameworks, then this is not necessary. I wrote a detailed blog post about how to create projects targeting the new platforms, which you can find on the website and linked in these slides, which we will share after the presentation. Now I'll show the demo sample from the blog post, which shows how to port your existing projects to .NET 5 and .NET Core 3.1. In the blog post, I showed how to upgrade this project, the GrapeCity.annual Financial Report project, which is included with the demo samples uh, up to .NET 5 and .NET Core 3.1. This solution contains six projects in total, three .NET Core projects and three old legacy projects. The .NET Core projects are using the same source and resources as the old projects. So all of the files in here are linked. Double clicking on one will take you to the other. Oh no, they've changed it now. It will actually try to open the resource there. When you edit the design time changes, you need to use the old framework version, the old framework projects to make those changes. Then you can use the designers like the spread designer or the tools in the property grid. And those changes will automatically get picked up by the net core projects when you build with the linked source files. You can find the Grape City Spread WinForms package using the NuGet Package Manager and find it on NuGet.org. And we will be updating that regularly on NuGet whenever we post a new release for Spread. I'm not sure what's taking so long for that to open the file. Something must be going wrong. Yeah, it's having a hard time. It's not really supported to open those files in the designer anyway. You really have to open this one. That's all I really wanted to show about this. Uh, if you want to learn about how to upgrade your projects, I recommend reading that blog post. It goes into great detail. Oops. I'm sorry, I'm having some trouble getting my slideshow to start again. Oh, 
Oh, that's why I have a window on top of it. Sorry about that. Okay, the .NET uh, 5 stuff is covered. Let's move on to cell data types for .NET objects. Next, I want to talk about the cell data types for .NET objects. This feature allows applications to set custom data types to cells, like Excel's data types feature for assigning stock or geography types to cells. The application can define a simple class, like the customer class in the example pictured, and specify the properties of the class, then use rich value of T to create rich value object using the class and the property initializer syntax. You can also take full control by implementing iRichValue on your class instead of using the template class, which uses reflection to expose the properties for better performance and flexibility. The vehicle class in the example pictured implements iRichValue. Your class can specify a custom glyph to display in the cell next to the default member by implementing the iMedia interface and returning the image. In runtime, the user can click the glyph or press Control Shift F5 while the cell is active to open the data card for the cell. The data card shows the object properties and values and can be clicked to insert the formula in an adjacent cell referencing the clicked property. Property values can be simple values like string, integer, or double, or other data type objects or arrays which can spill to empty adjacent cells when dynamic arrays are enabled. Spread provides built-in support for creating custom data types which wrap data table or data view and return the columns of values as spilled arrays. To illustrate this feature, I will now show a quick demo. This demo sample is included with the Control Explorer demos uh, with the product. And the full source code for these demos are included with the install. So you can find C Sharp and VB versions of, of, the, of the code for these demos installed with the product. This example creates two custom data types, one for customer and one for vehicle. And the customer data type has a property called vehicles, which returns an array of vehicles. And the code in here is using the transpose function uh, to make this array spill to the right instead of down so that the vehicles are shown across the column. There is an insert data tool that you can use to insert a column value. When you're using it on a table cell, selecting a property will add a new column to the table and set the formula in the cells for the column for the table column to reference the property that was selected. When the when it's not a table cell, it just puts the value in the next adjacent cell. And you can also type formulas directly in the cell. Oh, you have to use equals to make it a formula. Oh, doesn't recognize that one. Oh, I have to say B7 here to get the email property. Now, one other thing that you can do that's quite interesting with this feature is you can customize the pop-ups for the rich value insert or for the data card. In this example, which is uh, a work in progress for a blog post that Mackenzie is working on, there's uh, a custom data card we've implemented to show the poster for this movie object. And I've also implemented code to set the cell type in the table column to image cell type when you select the poster property. We'll be posting this example shortly with that blog. This is one of my favorite new features in this release. 
and I think this there's a lot of things we can do with this. We'll be we'll be putting out some more showcase samples to show off this feature. Spread has supported the hyperlink cell type for many years now, but support for hyperlinks is now greatly enhanced. Now you can import and export hyperlinks for cells and shapes in Excel workbooks and link to cell references, named ranges, and tables. You can link to email addresses using mail to or websites using HTTP and HTTPS or simply typing a web address like www.google.com in a cell. Hyperlinks can be added in cells or in enhanced shapes or in images. Users can type links directly into cells and Spread will automatically create the hyperlink in the cell when auto create hyperlink is enabled. And the user can press control K to open the edit hyperlink dialog to specify the link target, display text, and screen tip. New API allows the developer to easily get and set hyperlinks in cells and shapes. The hyperlink function is also enhanced to support creating hyperlinks to cell locations, named ranges, and table names. Now I'll show a short demo of this feature. This demo sample is included with the Control Explorer demos, so you do have the full source available for this. This shows how you can create hyperlinks that jump around in the sheet, which is very handy for creating a table of contents or a quick jump guide to get to important parts of your worksheet. You can also use hyperlinks to uh, put footnotes to uh, web resources or Wikipedia articles or other related content. If you hold down the control key while clicking a shape that has a link associated with it, it will just select the shape. And the control K key will open the edit hyperlink dialog. You can also open that with code. These formulas demonstrate using the hyperlink function to create links. And in this example, the auto create hyperlink is enabled, the auto create hyperlink property. So I can type in www.grapecity.com and it will automatically create a hyperlink in the cell there. If I use undo to undo that, it will undo creating the link. And if I hit undo again, it will undo the cell edit. So it is created as a separate action, just as it is in Excel. Okay. Now let's talk about the new let function. The new let function is useful for improving the readability of formulas and for optimizing formula calculations. This new function lets you define local names for use in a calculation, which can greatly simplify formulas with repeated expressions. This is common in certain formulas, usually when the formula must return a result that depends on several cases that must be tested separately using if functions. Anytime you have a formula in which there are repeated sub-expressions, that formula can be optimized using the let function to define a local name for the repeated sub-expression and then reference that local name repeatedly in the formula to be calculated. When that formula is evaluated, the sub-expression is calculated once and the result reused each time it is referenced in the formula, which can greatly improve calculation performance. It also has the effect of making your formulas easier to read. In this example pictured above, the calculation performance is improved from 47 milliseconds to 16 milliseconds, which is three times faster. I'll now show a quick demo of the let function. For this let function enhancement, I want to focus on the performance improvements that this can provide. This example shows two worksheets that are doing the same calculation. The one on the left is using the let function, and the one on the right is not. 
it's doing the same calculation, but it's using repeated repeated expressions inside of the ifs. So each one of those has to get calculated separately when it calculates. The result is one side is a lot faster than the other. This took 31 milliseconds, this took 94 milliseconds. I highly recommend using the let function in your formulas where you can optimize your performance. The show formulas enhancement operates just like in Excel. This feature is helpful for auditing formulas in the spread designer, uh, I'm sorry, auditing formulas in the worksheet. And in the spread designer, there is a new tool in the ribbon bar formulas tab in the formula auditing group to toggle whether formulas are displayed and a new keyboard shortcut control backtick that can be used to enable, or that can be used to toggle the, the show formulas mode. Now I'll show a quick demo of how this feature works in the spread designer. This is a, an aged accounts receivable worksheet that has a lot of formulas in these particular cells. When I go to the formulas tab, you can see the show formulas uh, button here. When I click it, the column sizes will, will double and all of the formulas will show in the cells instead of the calculated values. And when I turn it off again, it goes back to how it was before. Now, to use the keyboard shortcut, you do need to enable a property. Under the spread.features, there is a property called enable compatible keyboard shortcuts, Excel compatible keyboard shortcuts, I'm sorry. You need to set that property to true in order to be able to use the keyboard shortcut uh, to toggle the mode. And it works the same as clicking the button. The edit points feature is very useful for creating enhanced shapes with custom uh, with a custom shape. You can create a custom a customized shape that uh, that is shaped in any way you like. This feature uses the enhanced shape engine, which was introduced in version 13 and described in the blog linked in this article. The feature works as in Excel and allows the user to add new shape points, delete shape points open or close the path, and change the point type between smooth, straight, and corner. As in Excel, when, when in edit points mode, users can control click to add or remove shape points and drag drop the shape points or control points to change the shape. The context menus and keyboard shortcuts operate as in Excel. Now I'll show a quick demo of using the edit points feature. Actually, let's show this in Spread Designer first. Uh, this is just a simple shape like I showed in the slide. When we choose edit points, it changes to edit points mode. The cursor shows when you're over hovering over a point, you can grab the point and move it to change the shape. Or once you've selected the point, you'll see the control points show. You can move those to change the, the shape of the segment connecting the selected point to the adjacent point. All of these controls work just like in Excel and there's full support for undo and redo with these. Now the primary use for creating custom shapes is to do something like this. There's an example in the Control Explorer demos that shows a car insurance claim implemented in a spreadsheet using shapes to create a blowout diagram for the car. And it's an interactive blowout diagram using the shapes because the user can click particular shapes to select which parts of the car were damaged 
for creating the report. Now shapes like this can be created with spread using the edit points feature. Now I want to talk briefly about the enhanced keyboard shortcuts. These are Excel compatible keyboard shortcuts that we have added. This property is available in design time or runtime and allows quick and easy support for these common commands uh, for your users. We will continue to enhance the supported keyboard shortcuts in future releases. Keyboard shortcuts can also be customized in Spread Designer using the input map editor which can be used to import the Excel compatibility input map included with the control, which includes additional common Excel shortcuts. Applications can create custom action or undo action classes to implement custom user actions for automation and integration with the undo redo manager. Now I'll show a quick demo of how to enable the Excel compatible keyboard shortcuts in the spread designer. Okay, to enable the, uh, the keyboard shortcuts, you have to go to the spread object in the property grid under features, and it's here. When you enable it, it enables those particular shortcuts that I showed in the slide uh, to work. Uh, you can also go under settings in the spread designer and use the input map editor to load the input map for Excel compatibility, which is included in the bin folder where spread is installed. When you load that, you'll have many, many common Excel keyboard shortcuts, which override older shortcuts from legacy versions of spread and change the default behavior of some of these keyboard shortcuts to match how it works exactly as it is in Excel. Multiple worksheet selection allows the user to control click the worksheet tabs to select a set of worksheets. The user can right click the worksheet tabs and use the context menu to delete, move, copy, or, or set the worksheet tab color for the selected worksheets. The user can also simply drag and drop the tabs to move the selected worksheets within the workbook or press control while dragging to create copies of the selected worksheets. The context menu can be customized to include new operations on the selected worksheets. I will now show a quick demo of multiple worksheet select using the spread designer. Okay, to select multiple worksheets, you just control click each sheet and they will all become selected. Then you can use the context menu to do things like change the tab color, or you can move them in the workbook or you can create copies of them. And it is extensible because you can customize the context menu. Picture zoom effect for the checkbox cell type. This is kind of a small feature, but this was a customer requ requested enhancement. Uh, it enables the painting of custom checkbox pictures with a zoom effect. This greatly improves the visual appearance of these cells when the sheet is zoomed. I will show a quick demo of that now. Okay, here I've set up a checkbox cell as a three state checkbox and set the uh, set the property to allow the, the picture zoom effect to true. 
So when I zoom the sheet in and out, you can see the uh, the image zoom along with the cell. Now, before we added this property, it just wouldn't do that. And that is quite a quite a nice improvement. And finally, print entire workbook is another customer requested enhancement, which allows the user to easily print the entire work workbook with one print job as in Excel. To use this feature, you must set enhance preview and preview to true in the print info for the worksheet, and you must invoke the printing in code specifying the index of the worksheet with the print info initialized for enhance preview and preview. We have not changed the behavior of how printing the workbook operates by creating a separate print job for each worksheet when calling the print sheet function with a sheet index of minus one. That will still create separate print jobs for printing each of the worksheets. But using this new feature, you can make all the worksheets print uh, in one print job. Now I'll show a quick demo of how that works. Okay, I set the properties in the aging report sheet here. The print info properties for preview and advanced preview, enhanced preview and preview are set to true. When both of those are set to true, then the user can use the print function, the print sheet function, and the advanced preview dialog, the enhanced preview dialog will show. And print, do the print preview here in the dialog. And under settings, where it says print active sheets, you can drop this down now and there's a new option for print entire workbook, just as in Excel. And when you choose that, it will include all of the worksheets in the print job. And there's a lot of worksheets in this now because I copied a bunch of them. comes out to 12 pages. Okay, that concludes the, uh, the new features presentation. If there's been any questions, we can address those now. Hi, Sean, thank you. Uh, I believe most of the questions were answered throughout the presentation. If there are any additional questions, please go ahead and add them now. Okay, I do not see any additional questions. All right, well, I am available at my email address. You can email me with any further questions that you have. I love to hear feedback about spread.net. If you have any particular feature requests, uh, new components that you're looking for, uh, please do let me know. If you find any issues or problems, please let me know about that too. Thank you very much, everyone. And have a great day.